Well, here you go with another fun topic. Tonight, we're going to focus on difference of the means and statistically significant. So two pretty big topics we'll cover. Exercise one. We have 20 adult drivers were asked the following question. What speed is the fastest that you have ever driven? The table below summarizes the fastest speed. So let's make sure this table is in our notes with these speeds. Part A says go ahead and calculate the mean of these speeds to the nearest hundred. So I'm simply putting all of these in L1. You should be doing the same thing. If you're not doing it with us, you're going to have a hard time in class. Get all of these in L1. And then we'll run our one variable stats for L1. So I got a mean of 69.25. And of course, that's in, let's leave our units on here, miles per hour. Part B says, what is the range of these speeds? Well, basically, what's the highest speed minus the lowest speed? Let's see. As I scan, I would say the highest speed looks like 110 and the lowest 40. So I'm going to say that's 110 minus 40 for a total of 70 miles per hour. All right, easy enough. Let's see what happens when these speeds are randomly divided into two equal size groups. So what do I mean? Let's take a look at this table. I basically assign 70 got the number 1, 60 got the number 2, 70 got the number 3, 95 the number 4, 50 the number 5, etc. So basically I just numbered my speeds 1 through 20. And my goal is to randomly divide these into two groups. So explain how we're going to do random selection. So that's a big theme we've talked about this past couple weeks here is random selection. How do we randomly select things? Well remember, you first have to assign groups. Okay, so I'm going to assign, and this is what needs to be written out, and you need to be able to regurgitate something very similar. I need to assign the 20 speeds, each a number, from 0, 1 to 20. Would you agree that would cover all 20 numbers? So this is 01, 02, 03, 04, 05, etc. through 20. Okay, then we're going to pick any row, in the random table of digits, and circle two digit numbers. Okay, so what happens? Well, if a number repeats, we reject it, and then we continue until we have 20 numbers. Uh, if a number is too large, we reject it as well. Okay, so if that number is greater than 20, we kick it out as well, and we're going to go till we get 20 digits. So we're going to pretend that you did that, um, and here were the results that we got. So again, let's get this in our notebook pretty clear. So we randomly assigned them. We went to our random table of digits. We've got group 1. We've got group 2. So question C, before we actually find the mean, here's the question of the day. Do you expect the means of these two groups to be equal? Why or why not? Well, what are your thoughts? We know the mean of all the numbers, but if I just randomly put them in two groups, does that necessarily mean that they're equal? I'm going to say probably not. Uh, my gut says this mean might be close to this mean, but I don't think they have to be the exact same. Now, could they? Of course they could. Um, but do they have to be? I don't think so. As far as the ranges go, well, I can see 110 is the biggest and 40 is the smallest, so I know that had the range of 70. Um, but notice here, it looks like 95 is the biggest and 50 is the smallest, so that has a smaller range. What do you think that means about the mean? So now let's go ahead and calculate the means of these two groups. So again, group 1 should be in L1, group 2 should be in L2, and I have to do a variable stats twice. So I'm going to do one variable stats for L1, and then I'm going to run it again, one variable stats for L2, because I want each mean separately. And I'm running mine. My group 1, I had 67.5, and in group 2, 71. So how do these two means compare to each other? Well, again, like I anticipated, they're pretty close. They're not the exact same, but they're, they're fairly close to each other. And how do they compare to the whole mean? Well, remember that whole mean overall was 69.25. So again, I would say they're pretty close, not necessarily the same, but pretty close. Now, here's the big question of the day. 
calculate the difference between the two means. That is group 1 minus group 2. This is called a diff value. Okay, so diff obviously coming from the word difference. We need to calculate the difference of the two means. So as I calculated the difference between my two, I got a difference value of 3.5. And again, I want to label that with D-I-F-F. -F. That is the difference of the two means. So here's the next step. We're going to collect another two random samples called B and C. So we're going to take our 20 numbers, we're going to use that random table of digits again, and we're going to create two more groups called B and two more groups called C. Okay. Now, obviously in class tomorrow, you're going to get to be doing this on your own, um, but as far as the video goes, I'm going to help you create those. So here you have it. I used the random table of digits. I assigned... Um, my groups for B and I have assigned my groups for C and then I calculated their means. Okay, so again, what do you notice about these means compared to the overall mean? Well, remember that overall mean was 69.25 and you can look, when I break them into groups, I'm getting numbers pretty darn close to that. So let's say we did this separating the data into two groups and we found the means 100 times. Okay, so we use some sort of simulator at this point because we're not going to do this ourselves, so we use that simulation, and we've created this dot plot. So here it is for you. So I found the means 100 times and created this dot plot. Basically, you should be able to describe the shape, the center, and the spread of this distribution. So notice, the mean should be in the middle, and that's that tipping point, whoops, when you have half the data on the left and half the data on the right. Now, since I did this 100 times, you should be able to kind of count out 50 dots and estimate where the mean is. Um, but I think you can eyeball it, and we already actually know the mean, is right around here. So let's draw a vertical line in right where we think that mean is, around 69.25. And again, that tells me half the data should be on the left, half the data should be on the right, kind of like a tipping scale. Um, so that's what I would probably jot down for myself. Um, the group sample means are centered so the sample means are centered around the mean of 69.25. I might also say that there's some variability. And remember, that word just talks about the spread. They're not all at 69.25. I do have some a little spread out from the mean over at 77 and 61.5. So there's a little spread or a little variability. Um, the group means that are uh, closer to the original mean of 69.25 occur more often than the means that are farther away. And that's the other key thing we want to take away from this, is there's more closer to the mean than there are farther from the mean. So what are our results here? And this is kind of a big deal. We want to highlight these. Group means tend to differ by chance. The distribution of random group means will be centered at the single group means. Just like we saw there, most of them are centered around that 69.25. And the distribution of random sample group means should be symmetrical. Okay, and that's key. I'm going to show you a bunch of diagrams, and if they're symmetrical, then you know um, they're correct here. Okay, so let's go back to those 20 um, speeds. If the 10 smallest values were put into one group and the largest 10 values were put into another, the average of the two groups would be 58 and 80.5. What are the largest and smallest possible diff values for this data? So remember, a diff value is the difference between the two means. So let's think about this. If I wanted to calculate the largest values, okay, that means I put all the large numbers in one group together. So let's make a list here. So if I were to calculate the 10 largest, let's see, I'm going to start with the largest I can find. So I'm going to say that's 110 plus 95 plus 90 plus 80. Plus, shoot, I'm going to go on to the next line, 75 plus 75, and then I think there's four 70s. I would say those are the largest, so I'm separating that into one group, okay, and calculating their mean, so I'm adding all those up and dividing by 10. And then to get my smallest, I would obviously pick the smallest group of numbers. So let's see, that's 110, 
that's 40, 50, 255s, I believe, a couple 60s. So I'm putting the smallest groups together, smallest means, 65, 65, and there's four of those. And I'm dividing those by 10. It's saying I should get two means. One would be 58, and one would be 80.5. And what are the largest possible and smallest possible diff values? So I would say the difference between my two means, my diff value, is my 80.5 minus my 58 for a total difference of 22.5 miles per hour. So now let's go ahead and work on interpreting what this difference value actually means. So let's say, suppose the data originally came from two groups, one that has taken groups from a student who took driver's ed and one that had not. So let's say these speeds were from taking a driver's ed class, the fastest they'd ever gone, and these speeds were from students that never took it, or adults that never took a driver's ed class. Calculate for the mean for each one and find the diff value. So again, I've got this in L1. I'm using one variable stats L1 only, and I get a mean of 51. One variable stats L2 only, and I get my 67.5. Now to calculate that diff value, I'm taking my 51 minus my 67.5, and I get a difference value of negative 16.5. So what does that mean? Okay, and that's the whole point. Obviously, taking two means and subtracting is very simple, but what does it actually mean? Okay, now this sentence should be worded perfectly. Adults who took driver's ed on average, so there's a key word, so I'm describing these driver's ed adults, on average had fastest driving speeds lower than adults who took driver's ed. And how do I know it's lower? Well, they had it, the difference value was negative. So adults that took driver's ed on average had lower uh, fastest driving speeds than adults that took driver's ed. So their average was lower than their average. So let me pose another question. What if I, so I reorganize them, I reseparate them into two groups. What would a positive diff value mean? This time I would say adults who took driver's ed on average had higher fastest speeds than adults who did not take driver's ed. And lastly, what if the diff value ended up being zero? Then I would just say the average fastest speed was the same in adults who took or didn't take driver's ed. So a dot plot is created of the difference values with a sample size of 100. So we retook that scenario, we grouped them 100 times, and we found the difference values. So we took the difference between each group and plotted a chart here of the difference values. So statistically significant, here is a big topic. The, diff, the value of a difference varies and is due to chance. Okay, so that's key. Everything's due to chance. However, if an observed difference value is extreme or far from zero, it may be considered statistically significant and not possibly the result of chance. Let's star that box that in. This is huge. If there is a value that is statistically significant, it may be caused by the treatment in question. So the rule of thumb says, if a value will happen less than 5%, it is considered statistically significant. Now, where does that 5% come from? Well, think about this. Yesterday, we talked about margin of error and confidence intervals. And we said our confidence interval is 95%. We are 95% sure um, a value is going to occur between two numbers. Therefore, we are uncertain about the other 5%. Hence, that's where this 5% comes from, the part that is considered statistically significant. Okay, so I can't stress this enough. The difference varies occurrence due to chance. If you have somebody far from the mean, it may not be chance anymore, and it might be considered statistically significant. So I've just taken that same dot plot and recorded it here. So this represents the difference of the means. Zero meaning there's no difference between the means. As we work our way out, there's a larger difference between the means. So what is the probability of obtaining a difference value of negative 15 or less? So this is very simple. We're basically going to go to negative 15 and less and count them up. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 4 out of 100, which is 0.04, which is equivalent to 
4%. Okay, so only 4% were at negative 15 or less. Do you, you think a value of negative 15 or less is statistically significant? Why or why not? So basically we're saying, did that happen by chance or was there some treatment affecting it? Well, since I'm going to say yes, I think that is statistically significant because 4% is less than 5%, right? And we said statistically significant falls within that 5% of margin. Since 4% is less than 5%, um, negative 15 or less will only occur... Four percent of the time, okay, which is extremely rare. Four percent is not very big. It's extremely rare, extremely rare. Um, so yes, that's considered statistically significant, less than five percent. Next question: What do you think the probability of getting a difference value of thirteen or more? Do you think that's statistically significant? Why or why not? So again, very simple. I'm just going to find thirteen and count them up. Uh, so let's say that's twelve. So here's thirteen. So that's one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I would say that's 8 out of 100, which is 0 0.08, or equivalent to 8%. So even though that's small, do I think it's statistically significant? I'm probably going to say no. Although it only happens 8% of the time, um, we would say it would occur less than 5% to be statistically significant. Okay, so we're going to get a lot of practice in class tomorrow, but hopefully that 5% sticks out to you from our 95% confidence interval. Well, good luck tomorrow, and we'll see you then.